Hello again, we're back in the AMP lab and we're continuing to look at bones. We're going to do laboratory exercise 13, organization of the skeleton. And we have one of our full skeletons standing in front of you tonight. We also have one over there in the closet, but tonight I don't think we're going to bring any skeletons out of the closet. So we'll just look at this one. He has basically two main parts, or he's organized as an axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton consists of the head and the vertebral column, and everything else that hangs off of it is the appendicular skeleton. Okay, so the skull with the face, the middle ear bone, hyoid bone, that is, hyoid bone is right under here. When somebody is strangled or um, accidentally gets hung or something, it usually breaks that hyoid bone. It's a, a vertebral column vertebrae, the sacrum and coccyx back here is also part of that axial skeleton. Now, axial skeleton and everything else is part of the appendicular skeleton. Okay, we're going to go through pretty much in the same order as your labeling in your lab manual. This is the cranium, the part of the skull, the cranium and the face, off the hyoid bone. You can see part of it right here. The clavicle, common name is the collarbone. One of the most commonly broken bones in the body is the collarbone or clavicle the clavicle. It's sort of an S-shaped bone. Sternum. This breast bone is the sternum. Okay. Ribs attached to the sternum that actually attach to this costal cartilage or rib cartilage and to the sternum. So these are ribs and then the sternum. The vertebrae. The coxa which is the hip bone. Carpals make up the wrist bones. We classified those as and carpals make up the wrist and the tarsals the ankle. We're not there yet. Now it goes from carpals and in this part of your hand are the metacarpals and then the phalanges. All these bones in the fingers are called phalanges. That's plural if you were talking about one of these bones, it would be a phalanx. Phalanges, plural. Phalanx, singular. Okay, um, going down to the knee. Oh, he's got this place knee, kneecap. Okay, the patella is the kneecap. It is a round or sesamoid bone. Metatarsals, these, okay. Tibia, fibula. The tarsals, the metatarsals, and again, phalanges. One bone, one bone, phalanx, a bunch of bones, phalanges. Now, if you look at the phalanges in the thumb, we name that as the proximal phalanx and the distal phalanx. Okay, in the big toe, proximal phalanx, distal phalanx. Well, in all these other toes, there are three bones. In the other fingers, there are three bones. Proximal, middle, distal phalanx. Proximal, middle, distal phalanx. In the hand, okay, the proximal closest to the trunk, middle distal phalanx. Okay, and I believe that's all of those. Let's look at the back. I'm turn around here. Again, this vertebrae, the um, shoulder blade, common name, is called the scapula. It is a flat bone, scapula. Okay, the scapula, the upper bone of the arm is the humerus, the ulna, and 
It's going the wrong way. Anyway, the ulna. Uh, let me skip down and show you the sacrum. Okay, so you have the vertebrae, and these are fused vertebrae here, continue on in the sacrum, and the coccyx is like the tailbone. Okay, sacrum, coccyx, sacrum, coccyx, vertebrae. Okay, let's, now that I turned his arm, I need to go back. All right, now it's going the right direction. Okay, again, this is the humerus articulates with the, the um, scapula, the humerus, and then the ulna. Now, what's interesting about the ulna is where it articulates with the humerus, it has a U shape at that joint, but we'll look at that in, at another time. Okay, so the ulna has that U shape at the joint, and there's the radius. Now, there is a drum-shaped end of this radius, and this radius allows for this. Okay, so the correct anatomical position and turning that thumb down and then back up allows for the ulna to stay still, but the radius to rotate or pivot, to pivot and turn that arm, okay? turning your thumb down. Now, we already looked at a femur. This is the femur and again, the tibia and the fibula. Now, um, practice naming the bones and labeling your exercises. For this particular exercise, the only thing you don't have to know on the first page of the exercise is the middle ear bone. Every other bone listed in this exercise you need to be familiar with. 